Okay, so this is going on 141. So this is just more vector terminology. It's not like this is all of the vector terminology. A little bit of a repeat of stuff, but a vector quantity has two attributes. Okay, we've talked about those two. Direction and size or amplitude and magnitude. Those words are used interchangeably, so just make sure that you know what's what. So um, velocity has direction and speed, and speed can be a size. So it's not always like it's just five meters. It could be five miles per hour. That could be the size or the magnitude of the vector, all right? And um, so it says different from a scalar quantity, which has size but no direction, and um, represented geometrically as a directed line segment. So that means this. It can just look like this, and this is vector A, something like that. Or it can be represented algebraically as an ordered pair or triple. So vector A, we could say, is at 3, 2. As a triple, that's when we're getting into three dimensions. We are not going to look at three-dimensional vectors in here. Do y'all do three-dimensional vectors in physics? No, probably not. Okay. Um, you'll get into those in calculus. It just adds the Z, so you got X, Y, and Z. So with the hat thing, the I hat, J hat, and then you'd have a K hat, so those are alphabetical too, so that's a good thing. All right, so vector operations of addition, subtraction, or scalar, multi scalar multiplication can be shown geometric, geometrically and algebraically. So geometrically is where we're actually drawing them, um, and algebraically would be more like what we looked at today. But when you draw them, it's unless you're just multiplying by two and making it twice as long, you actually draw one and then draw the other one and put them together like we did in our notes on Friday. Okay, so here's where the big change is for angles and what you got to make sure that we can get out of this is that in navigation, so when we're talking about planes and, and whatnot or even, you know, driving in, in a boat, something, something like that. So the navigation direction is measured, so it is measured clockwise from true north. Okay, clockwise from true north. So what that means is, if you think about this as being north, east, south, and west, that you would have a, an angle right here, and that angle would be measured this direction, and that would be like a positive 20 degrees. Okay, so this is an example of that right there. So this direction is called the bearing. So if they're flying along a bearing of 30 degrees or 20 degrees or whatever, and that B looking thing right there, that is the Greek letter beta, a capital beta. So it's like the B with the tail. That's what that is. Printed is probably better than what I wrote, but I want to make sure you know it wasn't just a B for bearing. But at least it is B for bearing, but it's the beta. So this is, con this is in contrast to what we know and have already done and to what we call a standard position angle. And this, this blank might be a little too small for those words, but standard position is what I'm trying to fit in there. It worked better on the board on my paper. I guess I wrote too big. This is in contrast to a standard position angle, which we call theta, right? And that is measured, so when we have theta, this, and I have this angle right here. If this angle right here, which I didn't draw to scale very well, but if this is a bearing of 20 degrees, when we measure it as theta, like we've been doing on the coordinate plane, what would that angle actually be as far as theta is concerned? How do, do we measure it from here when we're measuring theta? Where does zero start on the coordinate plane? What have, we been, what have you been doing for angles up until now? Where's zero? I don't know where zero is. I don't know where zero is. Where is zero for angles on your coordinate plane? It's the x. It's a positive x-axis, right? Don't you start here at zero? This wasn't a trick question. We go this way. So if it's this same angle, it's a bearing of 20 degrees, what would theta be here? What do you think that would be if we're talking about the same angle? 70. Very good. Okay. So if your bearing is 20 degrees, and it won't say a bearing from north because that's... A, 
just assume that you know that, that's what it means. So a bearing of 20 degrees means theta is 70 degrees. And you have to be able to convert back and forth because when you are doing your r cosine theta, r sine theta, that's theta, okay? That's straight up theta, not a bearing of any sort, okay? So here's what this means. Oh wait, I'm sorry, standard position angle, which is measured counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So you need to be able to think about the angles in both ways. So to convert between theta and beta, beta, or the bearing, is just 90 minus theta, where theta is 90 minus the bearing. And that's because theta plus beta always equals 90 degrees. And if you at least understand that much and how they come together that way, then you won't forget which way to subtract. It's 90 minus beta or 90 minus theta. Even if the angle is 132 degrees, if I'm on a bearing of 132 degrees, then theta is going to be 90 minus 132, which would give me a negative angle, but it would tell me where theta actually is. Okay, it's okay to use the negative angles. Your final answer should always be positive. Okay, so when we're flying, right, we think of north, like when we're writing on our paper, north is straight up, right? But is north really straight up? No, <laughs> it's like straight out, right? Because it's like a flat thing. So if we're flying, okay, so here's the plane, and north can be coming towards me. It's you know, I kind of prefer my map when I'm driving to follow me, you know, and so it'll turn with me. But if I want to look at where I'm going, I want my map to be north being up. Otherwise, I can't make sense of what's going on, right? So you can think of north being towards me. So if the plane is flying straight at me, then that bearing is zero, right? If he turns to fly east, that's a bearing of 90 degrees. Does that make sense? This bearing is 90 degrees, but what is theta? zero, right? Does that make sense to you? And if he's flying straight south, his bearing is 180 degrees. So your bearing is not based on where you started. Your bearing is always measured from true north, okay? And then your theta is always measured from zero. So it helps sometimes to kind of draw out a little x and y axis if you're getting yourself confused. Just know that those are two different things, and you've got to be able to go back and forth between them, which is not that big of a deal. I mean, it probably sounds a whole lot worse than it is. Um, some other terms in navigation, heading, it's the direction that a vessel is pointing, right? So I'm pointing in a certain direction, I, that's my heading. The course is the actual direction, because your heading is where you're trying to go, but your course might be pushed off because of the current or the wind or whatever's happening. Does that make sense to you? This is where kind of math and science collide, because really for the most part in a lot of mathematical things that we do, we kind of ignore wind direction and we ignore all that stuff, right? And we ignore the fact that when you're driving, you're not always driving at a constant speed, right? We just kind of make a line. But um, these things kind of take that into effect, or into consideration. So your airspeed is your speed in still air. That only exists in a vacuum, right? So your ground speed is the actual speed relative to the ground. So these are terms that will come up and they'll make sense in the problems, but really I just wanted to make sure that you understood the difference between bearing and theta. And that you can't just take a bearing and just because it's an angle and throw it into your problem and think your whole cosine theta, sine theta thing is going to work. All right, you got to convert back and forth. Are we good? Easy enough? All right. And I will re-explain this tomorrow when we go through an example with it. I just wanted you to have the general idea because my understanding is you don't really talk about bearing in physics. No? Okay. Does it make sense? Does anybody have any questions? We're all good? Okay. Good deal.